How you doing this morning? Oh, I'm glad three of you are alive. How you doing this morning? All right, that's better. All right, I got several announcements I need to go through. I'm going to go through them quick. Um, November 17th, we're going to have a, a service of water baptism. I've had a couple of people ask me about being water baptized. So we're going to go ahead and set that up for November 17th. If you have not been water baptized, that would be a very good day to uh, take care of that. So if you would like to be water baptized, please see me after the service. Tuesday is women's prayer at 10 a.m. Wednesday, intercessors prayer at 7 p.m. here at the church. And th this Thursday, we're having a harvest party. 5.30 is a share-all meal and then the games for kids. Uh, so please, and even if you're not a kid, come. We're, you know, bring something to share for food, and, and we're just going to have a, a time of fellowship and fun. That's this coming Thursday, <clears throat> beginning at 5.30. November 10th, If My People Prayer Rally uh, in, uh, at the Vineyard Church in Manchester, New Hampshire. It's at 6 p.m. Uh, this is the final uh, prayer meeting for 2019. Uh, it's... Uh, something that Kathy and I have been intimately involved in and getting more involved in it. Uh, at this uh, particular meeting, I will be opening up uh, with a vision that God had given me back in 1985 for New England. So uh, if you would like to be the, to go, uh, I can bring you. We have room in our, in our vehicle for uh, uh, six more people. So if you'd like to go, let me know. Um, Winchester Community Thanksgiving Dinner. I was told that I was setting up a little early for that. The sign-up sheets for the various things that we need are out on the table in the fellowship hall. My response was, I always do things at last minute. I'm changing, changing things this year. We're going to give ourselves some time to, to really plan this out. Uh, if you would like to cook a turkey or cook a couple of turkeys, uh, we're supplying the turkey, so you don't have to go out and buy one. But we have about 165 pounds worth of turkeys that need to be cooked. That's a lot of turkey. All right. Um, 80 pounds of mashed potatoes. You know, uh, we need servers. We need ones to help set up. We need help people after the dinner to, to clean up and set this place up back to uh, the way it is right now. Because we turn this whole room into a dining hall for that. Uh, it's just a wonderful time to minister to our town. Um, what else here? Oh, yes, Operation Christmas Child. Uh, Operation Christmas Child. Uh, I, I'm going to show you a video um, uh, later on uh, about that, but the, all the stuff is in the, in the fellowship hall. <clears throat> uh, we're hoping to put together at least 100 boxes this year. Last year we almost hit that. I think it was like 80. 80 boxes, 85 boxes that this church put together. So all the information is out there. The, the boxes are out there. And uh, I really hope that you get behind this because you will personally make a difference in so a child's life somewhere in this world. And many of these children, this would be the first gift they ever got. You know, so you really have the opportunity to bless them. Um, Concord 101, November 13th, right here at Grace Christian Fellowship. Neil Hubacher's coming down from Cornerstone in, uh, in uh, Concord, and he's going to be put on, we're going to put on a two-hour seminar talking about what do the scriptures and the church history tell us about the church and the state relationship. How is New Hampshire unique among all 50 states in its citizens' accessibility to our state government? How does a bill become law in New Hampshire, and how can we most effectively be involved in that lawmaking process? It's an interesting process that you can be a part of. And uh, what is the, he's also going to be sharing what is the status of some current bills in New Hampshire and what we can do about them. So that's all happening here uh, on uh, November 13th from 6.30 to 8.30. Uh, that's it. Let's open up in prayer. Uh, Jim, Tom, Jim, come on up. Father, we do thank you for this day, Father. We just pray, Father, that everything in this day will bring you glory. Yeah. Father, your 
your word, your worship. Uh, Father, the message from the House of Hope, the message from Pastor. Father, House of Hope, interesting name. Every house that a Christian lives in should be a house of hope. Mm -hmm. Lord, we just pray, Father, that John... Lord, that we will bring you honor and glory this day. We pray, Father, that you will just have your way. We commit this service to you with expectations. And Lord, we just praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before we, Andy, start music. <laughs> Good. Something Pastor was talking about. I'm going to turn this mic on because it's not that I need it. But I'll turn it on. Because somebody else might need it. Pastor said that um, he's planning ahead so he People said it was a little early. Well, I'm a little behind, along with Tom being a little behind. In the past, it was Mary who always reminded us. She never let us forget, or Veronica, that it was Pastor's Appreciation Month. It's not that we totally forget, but our minds need to be reminded. If any of you know what I mean? And I think it might have been, yeah, it might have been Kendra who reminded Tom taken over her mom's legacy of reminding people that it's Pastor Appreciation Month. And um, before I forget, I'm going to say a couple things first, and then I'm going to have all the kids come up. I want to thank Tom and Roxanne for putting together this little thing that I'm, we're going to do in just a moment. Um, it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. And we're going to have the kids all come up and join me in just a minute. We're going to have a basket, and the basket will look like this. And once again, I had to enlist Roxanne because if I wrote that, you wouldn't be able to read it. So Roxanne has the nicest writing and, you know, besides maybe her kids who all have fantastic writing too. But um, we're going to put this back on the table where all the turkey signups are and all that stuff. This week we'll let that slide. We're going to have a love offering there. And the love offering can be, if you if you have money, that's great. If you haven't, if you want to write a note. Um, knowing that we're late and it's Pastor Appreciation Month, we're going to extend it into next week because many of you maybe didn't plan because if you're like me, you never have cash on you anyways. Um, I'm going to have that in the back table. If you want to give to that in, in, in the form of a monetary gift or if you want to write a check, please write it out to Pastor and Kathy because this is their love offering. It's our appreciation to them. There's also a card going around. Please take a moment. Uh, if you want to write a note or, or sign the card, but take a moment to do that to show your appreciation. So if I can have the kids come up and Pastor Matt and Kathy, that would be great. What? Yep, I'm going to get it. Don't worry. <laughs> And I have something I'm bringing over here that I don't know if Pastor's going to share this. In the past, you know, we've always done cakes. But we also know that Kathy can't eat cakes or doesn't eat cakes. Pastor doesn't seem to mind, but Kathy's careful with that. So that's why we're doing a love offering this year. They can put it towards whatever they would like to do. So I have a little reader here. And I'm going to give you this. I want you to hold it right up to your mouth. And I want you to read this out nice and loud. Our pastor is a sweetheart. For everything he does, he is always there to pick up the pieces and answer our, whatchamacallit. Sometimes we act like airheads or rainbow nerds. And he probably thinks we're from the Milky Way. But he has made a mounds of difference in our lives. Thank you, Pastor, for getting us in mint action. I can't forget that again. Condition for heaven and thanks for making the smarties. You deserve 100 grand every payday. You will always be in our hearts now and later. Yes, you did a wonderful job. And while, while Pastor's up here, we're going to have the kids lay hand on Pastor and we're all going to pray for Pastor and Kathy, okay? unsaid or unheard. And Father, thank you for our pastor. Thank you for his wife. Father, who do give unconditionally to this congregation, Father. Father, they are determined. They're committed. 
And Father, we ask that your blessings would be upon them, Father, for their commitment to us, Father. We just pray, Father, that, um, Lord, that we will bless them, Father, in every which way that we can, Lord, whether it be a, a, just a note of appreciation or a monetary form, Father. It, it's really not terribly important. The important thing is that we show our appreciation for our pastor and his wife. Bring glory to them, Father. Bring honor to them, Father. Bring prosperity. But, Father, most of all, bring just more of your spirit into their lives, we just pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That was Roxanne's idea. I think she might have got a little help from maybe Pinterest or something like that. Did you get help from Pinterest on that? It was on the internet, but it's a great idea. But her and Tom went shopping to find every single candy bar and package of gum and everything else that was on there. So that's pretty impressive. <laughs> we, we would just ask that you would pray for our prodigal son, that he would come to his senses and that he would be restored to us in Jesus' name. <laughs> Father, we do pray for John Matthew. Lord, I know there's many in this congregation that pray for him nightly. And Father, I just pray that that will be a commitment that all of us will make, that we will pray, Father, for that prodigal son. Father, that you will bring him back, Father. Um, Lord, just remind him of his heritage in Christ. Remind him of the dedication that Pastor and, and Kathy gave to him while he was at home. And the commitments that they made to him as home. At home, Father. We just pray, Father, that you would just sharpen his mind, Father. Clear his mind, Father. Let him hear clearly from your spirit. There are so many voices clamoring for our attention, Father. But I just pray that he would hear that still, small voice. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> she can stand to worship with us this morning. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray, unveil why we were made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come and made us mad. Cause we are your church, and we need your power in us. We seek your kingdom first. We hunger and we thirst. We refuse to waste our lives for your our joy and prize. To see the captive hearts released, the hurt, the sick, the Fill us with the strength and 
love of Christ Cause we are your church And we are the hope on earth Defender of the weak Freedom for the prisoner We sing This is God in His holy place This is God clothed in love and strength Awesome is our strong God, mighty is our God. With us in the wilderness, faithful to provide every breath and every step.
Do you think about that that is good and holy and pure? Or do you follow after the world? You cannot love two masters. You will hate one or love the other. Do not try to see what you can do and still call yourself mine. For I call you to be holy as I am holy. I call you to forsake that that hinders you. I call you to let go of anything that stands in the way of you knowing me. I want you to surrender. I want to be your Lord. I want to lead, guide, protect, heal, deliver. I want to supply all your needs. But you must believe that I am. You must receive all that I have for you. So come. Repent. Turn away from that that does not lead you to me. For I want to take you to a higher ground. I want to take you to a realm that you have never walked into. But you must give me your all. I'm caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave Oh, I'm not here for blessings Jesus, you don't owe me anything and more than anything that you can do, I just want you. I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry. When I just sing another song Take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you And I'm sorry When I've come with my agenda I'm sorry
want you and nothing else and nothing else nothing else will do I just want you and nothing else and nothing else nothing else will do
and I Uh, talking with Phyllis uh, on uh, Messenger, she was asking me, she said, please pray that uh, more churches would be involved and that I get the opportunity to come and speak into, at churches. And I thought to myself, it's been a little while since we've had, had House of Hope here, so I said, hey Phyllis, you want to come this Sunday? Now this was, I think, Friday. And, and <laughs> a little short notes, she said, sure, so, okay, we're on. House of Hope, a wonderful ministry that we have in our area. They're located in Keene, where they bring women into the home for um, substance abuse treatment. And the beauty about this place is that if they have children, they can bring their children with them. That's unique. Most residential centers the kids do not are not allowed to come and and then that separates the family and the whole point that of house of hope was to not separate the families but to keep the families together and even strengthen the family unit amen, amen. and we have a beautiful opportunity to be a part of that we have taken them on in our missions giving we uh, the church here we give every month to uh, to house of hope uh, i wish we could give more every month and uh, we'll just see how God opens the door for that. But uh, uh, Eli, if you want to show that video, we have a video that we're going to show, and then we're going to have uh, have uh, Phyllis come up and and give you a, a little rundown. Years ago, Phyllis and Bill felt called by God to open this home in the Monadnock region. It's been a long time for them of fundraising, training, and just getting the board together. I saw this house, I rode by it, and I thought, wow, there was like a little catch in my heart. It didn't look like we were going to get enough money to get a house, especially this size. Whenever you try to do something like this, it's extremely difficult, particularly in the area of the country that we're in, being in New England. New England is certainly not the Bible Belt, and so it's been quite a difficult thing to do. It's been a journey of crashing through the mountains and getting through the valleys and just finding a way to get through, and God has been faithful in that. 
we were we were gifted a large sum of money. One of the board members said, hey, did you ever uh, hear about this house here that we're in right now? We came out, looked at it. The board walked around, walked through the home. It, you could feel the healing of the Lord like the Lord had already gone before us. There was such a peace. No bank would loan you money because we hadn't been a 501c3 for a complete year yet. So the woman held the more other half of the mortgage for us, which is a miracle itself because she so believed in what we were doing. Keen Zoning Board, five out of five zoning board members voted yes. And we're here and it's happening. The vision is becoming a reality. We are trying to work on getting monthly support. More support for House of Hope means that we can help more ladies. It means that we can keep the program open, maintaining the day-to-day -day costs. Um, it would mean we could also expand our staff, which we need to do. Like it or not, none of us like it, but we have bills to pay. There are expenses involved with it. I will tell you this, we're very, very cautious about the decisions we make with the funds that we get to get the most length out of those funds that we can. However, it's very important that we have solid, committed people that are giving every month for this program and covering those gifts in prayer. Prayer moves the hand of God. And so the giving is not just giving of finances, but the giving of their heart as they give those finances and praying and seeking God with us for God to bless this program. We need to be able to meet our budgets and pay our bills, so we want to be stabilizing that this year. So if a person says, look, I'm going to give the House of Hope $100 a month or $50 a month or $500 a month or whatever that you feel you can do, that you're saying, you know, I want to do this. I really want to covenant with you and say I'm partnering with you for this purpose. And we pray and we'll lay hands on that on that gift every month when I give it. I'm going to say, God, expand this to the work of your kingdom. We believe that the giving heart along with the faith and the prayer will move the mountain. We've seen it already, and we're expecting greater mountains to move. Uh, right now we are hoping to have six beds available with expansion up to 12 beds, just to really take ladies in and start impacting the community in that way. This home is a light to the community that this is the answer. Jesus Christ is the answer. Amen. Not throwing more meds at someone, not throwing more um, therapy classes, but it's Jesus Christ who heals the soul. All of us have either been impacted by drug abuse ourselves, someone in our family, a friend or a distant relative. All of us know what's happening. And we can't just sit by and say, oh, well, not as Christian people. God didn't call us to sit by and say, oh, well, I'm okay and I don't care about anybody else. That's not how it works. We have to do something. And the something that we do has to be biblical. Now, as a pastor for 28 years, I know what happens when you do something biblical. God moves. His spirit is there. His power is there. And lives are transformed. But if we sit back and do nothing, we're going to have to answer to God for doing nothing. Now, what I mean by that is this. This may or may not be the thing you need to do, but do the thing you need to do. And if this is the thing you feel you need to do, then do it and support this ministry and pray and seek God because we know that God transforms lives. Thank you, Pastor Matt. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Um, this home, we didn't have a home when we were here last time. Did we? We did? Okay. So this was the, one of the very first churches, I believe, that got behind it, House of Hope, New Hampshire. And I'm really blessed by that. It's been quite a journey. Uh, Pastor Matt spoke one time and he said Goliath had brothers. Well, I think I've met a few of them. <laughs> I'm ready not to meet anymore. But um, I want to read to you Mark 2, 16 and 17. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? And when Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And that is what God has called me to do. He's called me to be the street team. And that's what he has provided this home for women that are hurting. They come for about 12 to 18 months. We've had 40 women that um, we have worked with in this year alone. Some come for a weekend and they need a greater level of care than what we can give. 
some come, but they all hear the message of Jesus Christ. They all hear the hope. Uh, one lady went back to her church. Uh, her husband uh, received Jesus Christ. She did not even heard the name of Jesus when she came to the home. She, she received Jesus. Her husband receives Jesus. They're in a church in Foxborough, Mass. She's working in the church um, office. That is where she came from. That is like we generally send them back to where they came from. And God tra literally transformed her and her husband's life. He healed their marriage. Um, I'm thankful for that. He's transforming more um, ladies' lives here at this home. Right now, my biggest struggle is the monthly support and being welcomed into the churches. It is New England. Um, a lot of the church pastors in the area do know me. A lot of the churches have come alongside for monthly support. This year, what we're focusing on is 3,000 people that would be willing to give $5 a month, two cups of coffee, and $5 a month to come alongside. If everybody does a little bit, it helps. And then everybody can have a part. But I really, this morning, when Pastor Matt, you said yesterday, you said, would you like to come? i have been on the phone calling churches all day. And some are getting back to me. But I know this is a praying church. And I'm right in the crossroads right now. And I still have mockers. And I'm a woman in New England, opening a home. I'm the least likely person. I have no education. I really... Um, not someone who speaks well <laughs> and I'm just me I'm just a woman who believed God for other women and he's changing their lives and he's touching them and I believe that God is bigger than heroin Amen. and I Amen. believe that he has called me to here just last week alone two people told me you're gonna have to close down the home you're not gonna get the support you need and I by I know God has called me and I know he's faithful and I know we have um, some issues right ahead of us now, hooking up our sprinkler system hook and getting the final um, stamp so that we can have 12 women instead of three. Three women, and right now we have three women we're intensely working with, and we have four children that's affecting. And I'm believing not only will God keep our doors open, but I'm believing in the years to come we'll be able to expand. Amen. So I'm just, this is a praying church, and I need, I covet your prayers. This is the God's work. The outcome's up to him. I will go till I cannot go no more. And I will face the giants because I've faced them before and I've been at this place before. So please believe with me. And I just wanted Kelsey to come. She's the newest lady at our home. And share a little bit. Was it South Carolina you came from? Arkansas. Arkansas. I knew that. <laughs> so I'm going to give her a few minutes. And I just want to please pray that I have a list of churches I brought. It's in my purse that I called. I want to pray that they open their doors and that God give me favor. And that he knows what we need at House of Hope. And I want to thank you so much for your prayers and for your support. This helps a lot. It does. And um, Kelsey, just come and share real quickly what the Lord's doing through the home for you. Hey, y'all. I'm Kelsey. <laughs> um, I was actually calling House of Hope for months before I actually could make it up here into New England. And uh, I just want you all to know that since coming to the House of Hope, I have watched my own prayers be answered. Um, I have watched prayers all around me be answered. And getting to know Jesus Christ is changing my life drastically. Um, I've even... I'm so blessed to be here. I'm so blessed to be at the House of Hope. It's not only a house of hope, it's given me hope. It's put hope into my soul and into my heart. It's a beautiful place. And I am so grateful and so thankful for not only the program and the women there, but the fact that I have been truly introduced to Christ. Thank you. Amen. 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 Stay up here. Stay up here. Stay up here. Okay. Um, Phyllis didn't tell you that, you know, they're up against the wall right now. They need to raise, what was it, $50,000 yes. by the end of November in order for their doors to stay open and, to, and actually to be able to increase and have more women and children come. <coughs> um, I'm not trying to parade this, <coughs> but I am real blessed in the leadership of this church, the board of directors who have the financial uh, heartbeat of this ministry and uh, the board of directors this morning 
have agreed to uh, give them a check for five thousand dollars this morning. Thank you, Lord. And now that sacrificial giving, because we're looking at forty thousand dollars for a new roof. The work is starting this week. Hallelujah! Half of that's Lord. already been paid. Thank you. Lord. All right, but I believe strongly that we don't give out of abundance, but we give out of our need. Yes. Thank you. And and I am blessed that this church, from day one, has never run in the red. We have always been in the black, and that's because of your faithful giving. It's, but it's also from the leadership, uh, the board of directors, in their giving as well to to others. We we have a we have a a twelve thousand dollar budget for just for missions. That's this church's tithe. We believe in tithing, so the church tithes. You know, and now we're going above that, and we're blessed to to do that. And I believe in my heart that in November, the end of November comes, that fifty thousand dollar is going to be met. Yes, Lord. Thank every you, penny Jesus. of it. Thank every you, penny Lord. of it. And I'm blessed that we get a t chance to take part in it. Thank Let's you, pray. Lord. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, we thank you and we praise you that we get to couple together with House of Hope. Thank you, Lord. It's not just these women, but it is the whole vision thank we, you, Lord. we grab a hold of. And yes, we uh, couple together with that vision. And Lord, your word tells us that visions do come to pass. That old men may dream dreams, but young see visions. And Lord, thank you, this is for Lord. younger people than me, anyways. <laughs> And, Lord, it's, it's a vision that they see, and it's a vision that we've captured, that we see it Thank as you, well. Jesus. And, Lord, this vision is going to come to pass. Yes, 100% you, is going to come to pass. Glory to God. And, again, I thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity to take part in that. In Jesus' you, name, amen. 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 Thank, Thank you. So much. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. We're going to pray and dismiss the children for Children's Church. And I will give you a short message this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for our children. And as they are dismissed for Children's Church and they get into the Word and we get into the Word, Father, that you will have your way with each one of us. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Kids, you're dismissed for Children's Church. If you will turn with me, please, to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John. Chapter 2, I'm going to begin reading in verse 18, 1 John chapter 2. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they, might not, that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. Can you say hallelujah for that? Hallelujah. And you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it. And that no lie is of the truth. He... <clears throat> Excuse me. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is the Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you, which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. Can you say hallelujah for that? Hallelujah. <clears throat> These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning the all things and is true and is not a lie, and just as it is, has taught you, you will abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he appears, he may have you may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. <coughs> that is a mouthful. 
the Apostle John is exhorting us to pay attention to the fact that we are in the last days. Do you believe that this morning? Yes. We are in the last days. We need to pay attention to the fact that antichrists are rising up. They always have and they will continue. So how do we identify an antichrist and how do we protect ourselves from being deceived? The scriptures tell us that even the very elect can be deceived. The very elect can be deceived. We have an anointing from the Lord to function under the use of <clears throat> excuse me, to function under and use to war against the enemy in all of his realms. We have the word of God as the sword of the spirit. We have the weapon of repentance to open up the door of deep revelatory relationship with God Almighty. Pay attention. We are blessed. Are you a blessed people? Yes. How blessed are you? You're blessed with eternal life. You're blessed with the Word of God. You're blessed with the anointing of God. You're blessed with the presence of God. You're blessed with the power of God. You're blessed with God being in your life. Yes. If you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord, you've opened the door of your heart and you've allowed Him to come in. He's in. Yes. He does not leave you. He will not forsake you. He may shake you, but He will not leave you. Pay attention. It is the last hour. The Apostle John said that to this little children, it is the last hour. Now, it was the last hour when he said that over 2,000 years ago. And it's still the last hour. Why should we pay attention to this if it's gone on for so many years, so many centuries, and yet nothing has happened yet? Where is Jesus? Where is he? Why hasn't he come yet? Because there's an appointed time. And that time has not shown up. But boy, I'll tell you, when that time shows up, there's no Hallelujah. gates of hell that can hold him back. Hallelujah for that. I believe in my heart that I'm going to see that day. That I'm going to see Jesus coming riding on that white horse. That I'm going to see my Lord coming down to set up his kingdom. I'm going to be a part of that. I'm going to see it. And I'm going to believe that to the day I breathe my last. Because, because I breathe my last and it hasn't come to pass, doesn't mean it's not going to. It just simply means that I'm going to be transformed from this broken down old body into something that's new. But it's, I'm still going to see it. I'm still going to be a part of it because I'm still going to be alive. This body may die, but God tells me, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will never die. I'm going to shed this thing. I'm going to be like a butterfly. I'm going to be like a caterpillar that spins himself into a cocoon. Yeah, did you ever do that? Yeah, we had kids. We used to, you go down to the, the what was it, the, the House of Butterflies? Is that what it's called? Yeah. About 20 of you said the same thing at the same time, but it was all different. What is it called? In the it's called Magic Wings. Magic Wings. Magic Wings. We went down there when the kids were little, and we bought one of these uh, uh, caterpillar. It already spun himself into a, into a, uh, a cocoon. Thank you. I was going to say a cyst. You have to forgive me, right? Into this cocoon. And then we washed the cocoon. And you know, the cocoon started turning. It, it was nice and green and it had this little um, uh, golden band around it with little beads and all. You know, it's a monarch butterfly. And, but the cocoon started changing color and it looking kind of yucky. You know, and then finally it just bust out and this beautiful butterfly came out. It was this ugly caterpillar went in it but this beautiful butterfly came out you know and and the, the, the butterfly uh, uh, hung there and dried its wings and, and all and the kids were like oh that's really cool you know and then the thing flew away you see I'm in this cocoon and this cocoon is getting 
maybe I shouldn't use the word uglier, but it is, you know. It's, I look at myself in the mirror when I was, I look at the pictures of me when I was 20-something, I was like, hey, that's not bad. I look at the pictures of me now, I go, that's bad. <laughs> you know, but I'm about, at some point, going to break out of this cocoon. And I'm going to fly to Jesus. Hallelujah. You <laughs> what? The ultimate photo chop. <laughs> the ultimate photo chop. <laughs> you know? See, we need to pay attention because we're in the last days. And we, and we need to be encouraged in that. Because with God, a day is a thousand years and a thousand years is a day. He doesn't mark time like we mark because he's already living in eternity. I'm looking forward to eternity. He's already there. I'm going to be there. Hallelujah. But I ain't there yet. See, what you see is what you get. <clears throat> I heard uh, Pastor Mike yesterday. Kathy and I went to Celebration of Life service for, for uh, Polly Pond. And uh, Pastor Mike did the service. And uh, I have to admit, it, uh, th there was a lot of testimonies, and different ones, and it went on and on and on. And, and uh, then, then it was Pastor Mike's turn. And I know Pastor Mike. He can preach for two hours and then take a breath. You know what I mean? And I'm sitting there, I kind of look at my watch, and I'm kind of, I was thinking, you know, maybe I should tell Kathy, better plan on being here for a while longer. Because Mike's now going to preach. He preached a very, one of the, I think, the shortest message I ever heard. And it was so pointed. And it was so beautiful. And it was so wonderful. And one of the, what he said was that there, basically in this world, are two groups of people. Pay attention to this, because we're living in the last hour. You are. Whether you're a believer or not, you're in the last hour. And he shared that there's two, basically two types of people. One type of people are scared of death. And they do everything they can to try and live longer. You have the other group of people that embrace the hope that only the cross can bring. And he spent his last uh, uh, time that he was with, uh, with Polly. And uh, she was embracing the cross. She was embracing her very near future. She was not fearful. I tell people, I'm not afraid to die. I don't look forward to the process, you know, but I'm not afraid to die. But that's easy to say when you're breathing and you're relatively healthy. Amen? Yeah. You know, have something <clears throat> brought to you that can determine uh, a shortness of what life you think you have. And that tells a lot about your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and how you respond to that. And I'm not saying that you don't that, that, that fear is not a part of that to a believer. But that you don't allow the fear to master you. But you master that fear. Pay attention, because we're in the last days. And you know something? The countdown began. When Jesus met in Acts chapter 1, I believe when he met with his disciples, and they said to him, are you going to restore the kingdom now to Israel? And Jesus said what? He said that that hour, I'm just kind of paraphrasing it in my own language, that hour is given, only, only the Father knows, I don't even know it. Only the Father knows that moment. Only the Father, that's in His authority. But you go. You be about building the kingdom. And they did. See, when, then, then, he, then Jesus was ascended to the Father. He, he was taken up right in front of them. And they're all standing there going, Whoa. Whoa. Hey, John, did you see that? Oh, Matthias, that was something else. What? Oh. Then an angel showed up. And an angel said, how come you're gawking up there? 
He's coming. As you just saw Him leave, He's coming again. And I believe in my heart that this book is yea and amen. And every promise that God has given me is for the church in this day and in this age. Every single promise He has given us, and that includes the promise of provision, by the way, is yea and amen. You see, the countdown began. When Jesus was taken up, the Father saying the countdown begins. And I believe that the Father, that God the Father, is so excited in His heart with what He is going to do. We so often think about, this, this is just, I'm just thinking of this right now, we, we so often think about in the end days when Jesus comes, what is that going to be for us? How are we going to play into that? What are we going to do with this? And But do we ever stop to think how excited the Father is? That He has set this appointed time and the closer it gets to that time, the more the Father is getting engaged in this and ready to set His will in motion for the end times, for, the, for, the, for His His. his Whatever he's going to do. You know? I want to catch, somehow I want to catch the excitement of God and what he is going to do for you and me. It's one thing to be excited for what he's going to do for me, what he's going to do for you, and what he's going to do on this earth. But I thank God uh, that, that he is giving me the opportunity to kind of see it through his eyes. You know, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3, I think it is, that the, the, the seraphim were, were, were cry, <clears throat> crying out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Then they said this, and we need, and I've just been, I can't get this out of my mind and out of my spirit. They said, the whole earth is filled with his glory. Now that was, that was truth back in Isaiah's day, but that is the truth in this day. The whole earth is filled with His glory. You don't have to look far to find the glory of God. There is so much garbage that's going on in this world. And we get so focused on the garbage. And we do need to pray against the garbage. We need to war against the enemy and, the, and all of those things. But we need to remember Jesus Christ wins. And he is having the last say. The countdown began. I just, I just want to encourage you this morning. You know, I'm not giving you some big theological, hermeneutical thing here that you can go, this is really going to change my life. I just want to encourage you today that Jesus Christ knows you. He knows exactly what you're going through. He knows what your difficulties are. He's intimately involved in them, whether you feel he is or not. He is intimately involved in your life and in your uh, calling that he has placed upon you and your involvement in, the, in building the kingdom. He is intimately involved and he will meet every need according to his riches and glory by his son, yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. But you see, the countdown has begun. Yes. The countdown has begun. It cannot be stopped. It cannot be interrupted. The countdown to, the, to that end day, that, that final day, it cannot be slowed down. And, but it can't be sped up either. I have, it can't be altered in any way. Why? Because God is sovereign. Hallelujah. He is sovereign. In Matthew chapter 24, if you'll turn there with me. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, Jesus was saying this. He said, but on that, of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken, and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken, the other will be left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour the Lord is coming. But know 
That if the master of the house had known what hour the thief had come, would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. He's going to come unexpectedly. You see, there's an appointed time, but you, you don't know what it is. None of you know what it is. Nobody on the face of this earth ever have or ever will know what that appointed time is. And if you ever hear somebody saying, and this has been many times, Jesus is showing up on October 28th, 2019. Wow, that's tomorrow. Oh, Jesus is coming tomorrow. Don't believe it. Please, please. When they start giving you those dates, and we've, we've all seen it through the years, just don't even give it the time of day. That's, I guess that's a good way to put it. Time of day. You see, it can't be hurried up, and it can't be slowed down. God is sovereign. God is sovereign. Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. There are many Antichrists. Now, I really don't want to get into the meat of this message. Uh, this was just the introduction. I'll get back and I'll get probably more into it next week. I just want to encourage you this morning. If it's anything, you leave here today, I pray you leave encouraged. That God knows you. My goodness gracious, he even got you from Arkansas up to New Hampshire. Uh, yeah, I was calling Phyllis for uh, about six months. For about six months. And Phyllis was again, Lord, will you please get her up here because I can't live on the phone. And every time we go to hang up the phone, she would say, can I pray with you? I'm like, yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> I love your accent. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> please, please, just be encouraged this morning. Please, please, be encouraged this morning. Jesus has not forgotten you. He's not leaving you in the dust unless you're not a believer. See, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's one thing right there. There's an old hymn, and I sing it often uh, down at, the, uh, uh, at Applewood Nursing Home, uh, when we all get to heaven. When we all get to heaven. Thank you. You know the hymn. But you know something? Only believers can really say that. Only believers. Because that final day, that final day is going to be a day of rejoicing for you and for me if you're a believer. If you're not, it's going to be a day of judgment. And that's not going to be a fun day for you. If anyone here, you have not received Jesus Christ as Lord. Anybody that's watching us on Facebook right now, you have not received Jesus Christ as Lord. It's becoming more and more of a burden on my heart to see people saved. More and more of a burden. I do not want, and I believe that God does not want anyone, because his word says he desires none to perish, but all to come. And here's that key word that's been coming through this whole service. He wants everyone to come to repentance. But in order to repent, you have to first acknowledge there's sin in your life. And most people don't want to acknowledge that. Many Christians don't even want to acknowledge that. But there's sin in, in, in your life. There's sin in my life. I need to repent. I need, because you have an anointing from the Holy One. You have an anointing. And we'll get into that more next week. But you have an anointing. And that anointing is first to share the life of Jesus so that there can be somebody that can be taken out of darkness and placed in his marvelous light.
and then they don't have to fear the second coming of Christ. Or they don't have to fear coming face to face with him on, on uh, the day that this body, their body breathes its last. I don't know how that all transpires. I hear people teach and say exactly what happens when you breathe your last and you go into heaven. And what that is all like, I don't know. Because I've never been there. I ain't been there or done that yet. And when I do do it, that sounds awful <laughs> funny. When that does happen, I will praise the Lord for 10,000 years. I don't know how, but I do know this. He will receive my praise. And I believe and I have the faith that he is going to receive me into his kingdom. And I hope and pray that I hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. I hope that's your heart's cry too. Let's bow our heads. And I pray that if there is anyone here this morning that does not know you or anyone that's watching us uh, on, on their TV or on their device that don't know you, that today they would pray, open their heart, receive Jesus Christ as Lord. Jesus, reveal yourself. Show yourself strong. Show how alive you are. Holy Father, help us to see through your eyes what you are planning on doing. I know you won't tell us when, but Lord, may we sense your excitement. Jesus, thank you for what you did on the cross. You died on the cross for, for me. You died on the cross for each one of us. Paid the price, an ugly ugly price for sin so ugly that for that moment it separated you from the father you cried out my God my God why have you forsaken me Holy Spirit flow amongst us Take scales off of people's eyes and unstop their ears. Chisel through a hardened heart. That everyone that's hearing this message will be able to proclaim, Oh, taste and see the Lord is good. I am blessed as I'm finding refuge in you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's stand. Yes, sir. No. Yeah, I'm not going to bother showing you the, the uh, video of uh, Operation Christmas Child. I'll do that next week. I bless you. I bless each and every one of you in this place today. I bless you with a deepened understanding of the word of God. I bless you as your pastor in a depth of relationship with Jesus. I bless you this morning with the presence of the Holy Spirit that will convict, bring you to repentance, 
bring you to freedom. Yes. Jesus said, I come to set the captives free. He was set free. It's free indeed. In in I pass this blessing upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you need prayer, come on up. Uh, we have fellowship in the, in the fellowship hall. Bless you.